We'll begin with our invocation. We're going to have our prayers right away and then our scripture reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Spirit, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, a day of new beginnings, a day that we can serve you, that we can worship you. We pray that you would bless us in all the things that we are called to do today, give us strength and energy. We include many special petitions for those who, who call upon your name. We pray for those who mourn. We include uh, Professor Mike Brown from Pharmacy and his family, his grandmother called to rest after a very long life of faith. We pray also for the husband and family friend of Professor Lois Harrison. Her friend died very unexpectedly of a heart attack at age 52. Lord, for these families and all who mourn, we pray your comfort. We pray that you would be with those families, assure them of your presence with the reminder that all who trust in Jesus indeed do live forever. Lord, we pray for those with health concerns. We lift up a childhood friend of Professor Chris Cunningham, who is uh, donating a kidney to his own father who's experiencing kidney failure. We lift up a student who's having health issues and undergoing testing to determine the cause. We pray for Professor Sarah Laverne, who's um, undergoing treatment for, for a painful herniated disc. We pray for the husband of graduate student Aaron Lieb Hansen, who is undergoing back surgery today. Lord, for each of these, your servants, we pray effective treatment and healing according to your gracious will. Grant wisdom and skill to all who attend to them. Grant them peace and patience in your love and in your presence in their times of need. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and pray thanksgiving with Professor Joshua Locklear and his wife, who welcomed a baby boy on Friday, Oliver. Lord, we pray blessings on this young family and good health for mother and baby. Lord, we um, lift up a student from Miller Park Center who is seeking wisdom and knowledge and understanding as she studies in her class. And we pray that for all students to study well, to be faithful in their vocations as students and to see, succeed well to your glory. Lord, we do pray blessings on the new semester that there would be diligence in faith and in studying that you'd be glorified in all our efforts Lord, we pray finally, especially this day, for safety in the snow and the cold weather, for all who are exposed to the elements who need to be out in the weather. Lord, grant wisdom and, and good judgment to people who are out in the weather and, and keep all safe, Lord. Um, all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We turn to God's word, our scripture reading, our theme verse, an extended portion of that from Romans chapter 8 beginning at verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So if I were a, a genie, fresh out of my bottle and could grant you three wishes, what would you request? Don't bother spending much time on the question. I'm not a genie. That is not to say, though, that I cannot help you with certain wishes. For example, you might wish for another day off tomorrow on what may be the, the coldest day in these parts in recent history. We'll see. 
On this first day of the semester, you might wish that I would drop all of your tuition and room and board charges. Obviously, I could not do that for everybody, but technically, I suppose that I could do it for somebody, except I really could not just do that for somebody and be fair to everybody else. I won't do that. Don't ask. Maybe, maybe you wish that I could change a grade that you got last semester. Nope. Cannot do that really under any circumstances. I don't really have that authority. Grades are entirely between students and faculty members. What can I do for you? My guess is that those things that are the farthest reach, even if, if the request is, is not impossible, are the least likely to produce the desired results. And yet, every semester, I get visits from students who hope that I can intervene in some way. And often the requests are, are reasonable enough. Once in a while, I'm even able to help. College presidents are not genies, and most of you would agree, based on your own experiences, that college presidents aren't genies or geniuses either, for that matter. But not knowing where else to turn, to get a question answered or a need addressed, sometimes folks will come to me. This morning, I would like to zero in on those first few verses from Romans 8 that Pastor Smith read a little while ago where St. Paul asks, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then he further remarks, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? To me, that promise sounds way more expansive than a genie with an offer to grant a mere three wishes. And the Bible puts this very same promise out there in other places with with much the same incredible implication. For example, David writes in Psalm 37, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desire of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust him. He will act for you. Delight yourself in Jesus, who also urges us himself. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. God is not holding anything back. The desires of your heart, all of these things added unto you. God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Wow. That sounds too good to be true. Could it possibly be true? Of course, God's promises are always true. So maybe it would be good for us to spend some time reflecting. If you could ask God for anything right now, what would you request? And rather than just thinking about what you might ask, I would encourage you to pray. No sense just imagining when Jesus invites us to ask and to seek and to knock and and he promises that he will answer. We should most certainly ask, seek, knock. And why, why hesitate? The prospect of of approaching God, however, seems a little different than speaking to a so-called genie or or a pseudo-genius to fulfill our wishes or answer our questions. And before we pour out our heart's desires and ask for the things that we think we we want or need, King David and St. Paul and the Lord Jesus frame things for us, don't they, right? Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give the desires of your heart. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. God gave his son for you, and given that, what else do you need? So I'm working off the theory that the things for which we ask depend to a large extent upon the one to whom we present our petition. You might ask it genie for a winning jackpot lottery ticket, since you know that there are no genies, just let your imagination wander, I guess. What's the real harm? 
even though it's an exercise in futility. And it would be just as futile to ask me for a winning lottery ticket or even a free pass on your tuition and room and board. Since I am neither genie nor genius, you may not bother to ask me for anything. If you do, however, your request will be framed by our relationship. And you will focus your request on something that you feel is reasonable and that you believe would also make sense to me. Of course, as I stand here, I cannot promise you anything. God, however, promises you everything. At the same time, when we approach the Lord in prayer, our requests are also informed by our relationship to Him. And when we delight ourselves in Him, the desires of our heart are then molded and shaped to conform to His will and purpose. And when we seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, the requests that follow are guided first by that quest. And when we consider God's great sacrificial gift of Jesus and His suffering and death, we are reminded in the most vivid way that God does not hold back on us. He gives us what we need the most. Or as the hymn writer reminds, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride, all the vain things that charm me most. I sacrifice them to his blood. St. Paul in Romans 8 is not ambiguous about what frames our relationship to God. God is for us. So who or what can be against us and cause us to fear or to worry? God loves us. There is absolutely nothing that can separate us from God's love for us in Christ Jesus. Nothing. We are God's children. And earlier in the chapter, we're reminded that we have not received a, a spirit of slavery to cause us to fear, but the very spirit of God that moves us to call upon him as our father. Children of God. Loved by the Father. Sometimes children, even children of God, can get their theology, though, a little bit confused. Recently, my, my grandchildren were watching a movie with uh, their parents, my son-in-law and my daughter. And I guess there was popcorn involved. So when my daughter reached for some, Three-year-old Ava stopped her saying, no, mommy, popcorn is for kids. That's just the way God made it. God's promise graciously to give us all things does not mean that our prayers, popcorn or private, will produce precisely the desire that we want. There is no part of our lives that, that escapes our Father's attention. No single sparrow falls to the ground without his knowledge. He numbers the, the hairs on our head. But that doesn't mean that you're going to get a front row parking place in the lot on a cold winter day when you're running late just because you prayed for one. It doesn't mean that you're going to get all A's this spring semester even though you plan to work very hard and you pray that that would happen. It doesn't mean that your, your sick grandmother is, is going to get better even though you've prayed for her healing. It doesn't mean that you won't have money problems or relationship problems or anxiety issues or other stuff that troubles you just because you ask God to spare you those concerns. But St. Paul tucks another promise in Romans 8 that reminds us of what all this does mean. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Delighting in the Lord, seeking his kingdom, recognizing his promises to be with us, to be for us, to love us, especially in delivering up Jesus for us and for our sins. God always answers our prayers for the good and according to his will and purpose for our lives. Who could ask for more? In Jesus' name, amen.